I have an iOS app called Sofa that helps you be more intentional with your downtime. And to support that product, I have a few different websites that I've been maintaining to, to really kind of be the infrastructure for that. I have the main Sofa marketing website, which is sofahq.com. I have a blog, which I use for posting news and information about releases. I have a support site, which has documentation that I can point people to when they run into issues. And then I have some additional smaller support pages and a press kit uh, that I put together in Notion. For most of 2022, I experiment with a bunch of different publishing solutions to see what would be a good fit for me. So over the past year, I used combinations of uh, Notion plus Super. I used Framer. I used Ghost. A couple years ago, I just kind of hand-coded something myself. As time goes on, I'm finding that I value more all-in-one solutions and systems as opposed to five different tools that maybe do five different things that you kind of have to string together. All of these different services have their pros and cons. What I'm finding is that I'm starting to consolidate things down into WordPress. So I thought it might be helpful to take some time and just share my thoughts and some of the things that I've learned over the past year doing this. It would probably be helpful to share how I think about this stuff and how I approach it. First, I view Sofa's websites as necessary product infrastructure. I don't necessarily want to be spending all of my time or most of my time on these websites. I wanna be spending most of my time on the app itself, making that better, building new features. I'm also learning that the type of infrastructure I value tends to be things that are a little more boring. Um, and predictable, which is good. So there's a couple things that I'm really looking for when it comes to any kind of uh, system or, or app to make these websites. So number one, the ease of design and creation. So I'm a designer professionally, and um, I was a designer before I was a developer. I really enjoy building things in a visual way as opposed to just kind of hand coding stuff. There's a lot of ways and solutions out there to do that, and they're getting better and better over time. So if something like that exists and I can use that and then dip in for more details, I'm all for it. I also want something that has low maintenance. I don't really want to be thinking about this or, or worried about this or having to uh, update an SSL certificate or something like that. I, I really want things to be uh, very low maintenance. The editing of content. So I have blog posts, I have support pages, um, I have release notes, I have all types of stuff and, and that's kind of growing over time as the app grows. And I want that experience of editing that content to be easy, reliable, and I wanna be able to throw anything at it. So not just text, but images, videos, um, animated GIFs, all types of stuff. I also want to extend this over time. So, you know, right now I have ideas for what this these websites can do or this single website can do and that may change over time and i want to be able to keep building upon this system and this infrastructure without having to switch systems uh, multiple times because switching systems is pretty painful uh, then there's reliability i want it to be around and uh, i don't i don't want to invest in something and then it's gone in a year or two years I want this thing to be around for a long time so that I can really dive deep into it. And then lastly is cost. Um, I'm not looking for the cheapest thing. I also don't want to spend a ton of money on this stuff, but I am willing to pay a little bit more uh, if I get these other things out of that experience. So first, let's talk about Notion plus Super. So if we actually look at uh, what Super is, there are a few services that do this where you can essentially use Notion as a CMS and then uh, it essentially builds static sites off of that. So technically very cool and very interesting. And for a little while I was using uh, a service called Super, which does that. So you can essentially take Notion uh, pages and put those together in here, which is, uh, which is pretty nice. I really did like this quite a bit. It was super easy to edit content. Notion is probably the best CMS I've ever used in my life. Just editing stuff and you can literally throw anything there, which is really nice. And you can theme this stuff. Like there's, there's tons of websites that are built off of this and uh, it actually worked pretty well and I was able to, to do a good amount of customization for it. So the things I really loved about uh, Super and Notion were the editing experience. So like I said, like Notion CMS was incredible and being able to just write in there or add images or different layouts and stuff was really, really nice. And I, I honestly kind of miss it um, for, for the website stuff specifically because it was just super easy to do. So while it was 
cool that you could build static sites off of uh, a Notion page. I found the experience to be a little bit janky, not as reliable. Updating content could be pretty slow because it's, you know, if you know how static sites work, they have to rebuild pages. I found it to be a bit slow. And I know since Super has uh, introduced like a, like a higher tier plan where it speeds that stuff up. But when I used it, it just, it was just a little slow. Customizing the CSS for this was also very hacky and not great. Uh, the the kind of the editor you had to use within the super web app was pretty limited and you had to use a ton of important tags to to override a lot of stuff while you could do a lot of CSS customization I didn't find it to be very pleasing the other thing too is it, this is not officially sanctioned by notion and I, I who knows if notion just doesn't support it or just cuts it off or something I I don't think they would do that. Notion seems to be pretty good when it comes to community stuff. But if you think about the website as, uh, you know, kind of your product infrastructure, I didn't feel comfortable continuing to build on something like this, just in case it went away. So the next thing I used was Framer. And that's what I was using for the, the main Sofa website. So the main marketing site. Framer has been many things over the years. They started as, um, basically like a, I think it technically started as like a, like a prototyping tool. Um, I know it was a pro, it was like a visual prototyping tool, like visual coding. And you could see the editor basically like what you do with Swift UI with canvas. That's kind of what framer was, but even before then, uh, at Facebook, I think they just kind of wrote a lot of, they basically created a framework where you could quickly prototype things with nice animations and stuff. That's how I think it started. They have iterated and pivoted many times over the years and the current offering is you can essentially create websites with Framer. This is awesome, like really, really good. I really, really enjoyed and loved this quite a bit. The, the whole process was really great. So if I actually, I'm gonna go into Framer here. So this is the site, the Sofa site in Framer. So what's really nice is you essentially have your pages over here. So I'm on the home page here, but I could go to the pricing page or the privacy page, terms, all that kind of stuff. And then if you are a designer or have ever worked within like a canvas environment, which I am very comfortable in, this is so good. Really, really great. What's really nice is you can jump in here and you can, you know, you kind of have your, your uh, properties panel over here, laying out stuff. It works very, very uh, similar to uh, any design tool you've used, whether you've used uh, Illustrator, Sketch, Figma, all those goodies. This is really nice. And uh, the editing experience is, is the best. This is like the best uh, design experience. And you can have breakpoints and, and kind of make all those things as you go. You can um, preview that stuff as you're working too and, and kind of drag and see like how things resize and, and all that stuff. And then when you're ready, you just publish it, right? Like you, there's just like an easy button, you hit publish and your, you know, your updates are out live, which is, which is pretty sick. So there's a bunch of pros uh, for Framer and mostly I love the fact that it works exactly like a design tool. It just, it's, it's my favorite. So from an actual design perspective and making the exact website look how I want, I love it. I just feel super comfortable in, in this environment making this stuff. They have a databases feature, which is pretty clever. Uh, so essentially what you can do is uh, you have this CMS and you can have like, you know, I'm using it for like a database of uh, quotes. You can have uh, technically support docs in here. Um, I use it for also like populating uh, feature areas. And so you put this data in and what you can do is uh, when you go to say like the pricing page, uh, this block of content is driven by that database. So if I add more data to that database or that CMS, uh, it'll be updated within this layout or this like block. That's actually really nice. Um, the CMS itself is pretty limited at this point. They have been improving stuff, which is good. But like when I was first using it, they didn't even have like bulleted list and stuff. So you, you are able to add more things, which is nice. So also creating and editing pages is just super easy. I can just dive into, you know, these layers here or, you know, this, this left hand panel to go through the different pages that I have. It's just really, really nice. And then you can see your layers when you're on a specific page. You can see the different assets that you have. It's just 
really great. And you have all these really nice components and stuff that you can get started with. You can save your own components, which is really cool. So some of the downsides I have with uh, Framer. So number one, I mentioned this earlier, they have pivoted their product and their, their company many times. And while I th this is my favorite version of Framer that they've ever made, um, I am a little concerned that they'll pivot again. And then, you know, maybe this doesn't work as well as they want it for, you know, for business reasons. And they change their product and then they move on to something else. And then this kind of goes away. Essentially, their, their record of pivoting so often, which is not always a bad thing. Um, I'm a little hesitant to really commit to this even though I love it and I'm, I'm genuinely, I already miss it. Like I already miss using this and, uh, uh I'm, I know I'm going to continue missing using this. Uh, the other con is the content editing is a little too basic. So like I said, um, you know, there, I have support docs, I have release notes. Um, I have blog posts, I have all types of content and there may be more in the future. And, those databases and the CMS feature that I showed are, are really nice for, for basic things, but it's not quite as robust as I need it to be for, for some of those things. And, and I don't know if they plan to do that. Um, they may not, they may just make it like basic enough and that's fine. Um, but, but that's another reason why I don't think this is going to be a good fit for me. So the next one I used is ghost and ghost is think of it like a simpler WordPress that is really just built around publishing. Uh, so blogs, uh, magazines, newsletters, that kind of stuff. And I was using this specifically for uh, Sofa's blog and then for the support documentation. And those were actually two different sites. They were specifically two different sites because uh, while you can create different like areas of content in Ghost, it's not really what it's for. The overall like, we'll, we'll kind of get into it, but um, it's not quite as robust when you have a lot of content you need to manage. So if we look here, this is the ghost um, CMS in here. And if you're just a writer and you just have a blog or a newsletter or something like that, ghost is incredible. Really, really great site. So if we actually look at this, uh, so this is what the support site looked like. And you can see it's, you know, it's got search and you can click into a support article here. It has nice breadcrumbs, shows related articles. So for uh, this specific purpose, like these support Docs, this was really nice uh, and, and worked pretty well because if we go into the editor here, so if, you know, if we say like, uh, let's go to like how to share a list. So if I go into this, this is where I edit and the actual editor here is really nice and, and, and very, very simple. It's highly based on medium, you know, really takes a lot of design cues from there, which is not a bad thing at all. But you can add images to here, you can add videos, all types of stuff. And they have like this cool, you know, you can do like a slash command and there's all types of stuff you can add here, which is really nice. So some of the things I really loved, I kind of already talked about some of them, but the editor and the actual like writing experience in Ghost is very nice. I find it much nicer than WordPress. I actually enjoy it more than Notion, like physically writing in there because Notion has this, this kind of block editor. But Notion's just great. You can just kind of chuck everything at it, which is good. But for just writing ghost is, is really nice. The basic ghost themes, the ones you kind of just get for, you know, the basic ones for free, I just think they're nicer than what you get from WordPress. Um, WordPress's basic themes have always just felt a little, I feel like they lack refinement. Yeah, they just feel a little a little jagged. That's super subjective, but I, I find ghost, the ghost themes to just be nicer and, and more, I feel like more attention is paid to the details of typography, spacing, that kind of stuff. Uh, ghost also has a native newsletter feature where people can sign up for like a mailing list and stuff, which is really cool. So you don't necessarily have to have like a newsletter type thing, but you know, if you have, if you have like an app or a business and you want to start having creating a, an email list, you kind of get it out of the box for free, which is pretty nice. So some of the cons that I ran into, so building a full site with Ghost, it is possible, but it's not really what it's for. It's it's really a publishing tool. And while you can push it in different directions, you, you're really, you're kind of forcing it. And I found as I need it more like, oh, I need like say individual pages, if I'm sponsoring a podcast or, uh, I need a landing page for a specific feature or for the homepage, 
but I also need a blog post and I also need support docs. It just doesn't really scale to that kind of level unless you do multiple sites. Doing it all within the same site is a little, I, I personally found it to be a little difficult. If you want to edit any themes, it's just a little dev heavy. And again, you might say, well, I do development. Yes, that is true. But again, I, th the maintenance of this, I don't want it to be super high. And that just felt like uh, a little bit extra that I didn't want to really get into. If I wanted to make small changes to different parts of the website, I didn't want to have to like get everything up and running just to do that. Also, the way Ghost manages media and assets, so like images, videos, is like kind of bizarre to me. I don't really understand what's going on. You can't really find it anywhere. So like if I add a picture to uh, a blog post, it's in Ghost, but I don't really know where it is. And then if you do exporting, it doesn't really bring the images with it. So I find it to be kind of annoying the way it handles that kind of stuff. You also cannot bulk edit post, which is so frustrating. So if you think about, so I have different tag, like this is for the support site and I have these different tags to kind of group content in different ways, right? So if we go back to the homepage, you can see getting started. This is a tag shortcuts is a tag. So those individual posts will be grouped together within that tag. I can't like select multiple posts and then change a tag or or do any kind of bulk edits, which when once you start having, I would say even more than like 10 posts in here, that's just super, super annoying. And uh, I, I I think like that would be a deal breaker for me in a lot of situations because it's, it's not uncommon to have to go back and edit certain things, certain metadata within all of these different posts, whether they're blog posts or support pages or whatever. And to have to go into each one and open this little drawer and change all this stuff. Like it just, it totally sucks. So ghost is great. If, if you're really, if you have like a blog and you're a writer and you want to do a newsletter, ghost is amazing. It's, it's probably the best option for you. So now we're landing on where I am today. And so today I am using WordPress and what I've done is I've actually moved everything over. So I've moved, uh, the blog posts, support documentation, the main landing page, what we're looking at here. So this is all WordPress that we're looking at here. So far, things have been really nice. And honestly, I think most people would not even notice that I changed any service, you know, that I went from say Framer to, to WordPress. I think most people, if they came back here a few times, it would feel like the same site to them, which is great. And what's really nice is, so you can see I have uh, the blog here and we have, uh, support so you can see all this stuff so it looks similar to what was there before but not it's not quite the same but what's really nice is this is all in one place and i don't have to jump to say two or three different sites to update things i can just go right to wordpress and it does it i am also using a uh, theme called elementor which uh, if you're familiar with wordpress you've probably heard this but this is a theme that um gives you a visual editor to actually design your site. So instead of having to code stuff by hand and write CSS and all that kind of thing, uh, you can just visually do it. All of this stuff that I made is, is put together with uh, the Elementor theme. And it's, it's, no, <laughs> it's nowhere near as good as Framer. Like Framer is the best when it comes to this. I've, I've literally never used a website design tool as good as Framer. Um, but for it being a WordPress theme and compared to the other options, even like something like Squarespace, uh, I, I'm finding Elementor to be very good. And it gives me a very, I'm able to get down into the weeds in the, in the way that Squarespace, it does allow you to do it, but you really have to dip in the code to do that. Um, but the, the level of editing detail here is, is really nice. So let's get into specifically why I am going with WordPress for this stuff and really consolidating everything down. So number one, the ease of design and, and tweaking stuff, uh, like I just showed the Elementor theme is very good. Uh, it's been around for a while. And as you saw, I was able to put together a, you know, a, a well-designed site that looks like what I made in Framer, which was a, a, an even better design tool. And uh, I'm finding that experience to be pretty good. And there's been a few times where I've had to jump into maybe tweak something. And 
that process has gone well. It, it, it doesn't take a lot of time. Um, I'm, you know, I'm able to dip in and out without a lot of fuss. This is also very low maintenance. So there was a, a ton of work to migrate everything. Um, so migrating all the blog posts, the images, like I said, getting images and stuff out of ghost is painful. Um, so for the support docs, for the blog posts, all that stuff migrated over. That was the hard part and that was more just time consuming. But uh, now that everything's set up, the, the maintenance wise, it, it's it's good to go. And I'm actually using uh, WordPress.com for the hosting. Um, so managed hosting. So, you know, yes, I'm paying a little more for that, but they kind of handle it for me. I don't have to worry about scaling up servers or, you know, any any of that kind of technical stuff. They, they will handle it for me. So the next thing would be content editing. And the WordPress CMS is excellent. What's really nice is you can kind of similar to, to Notion in a way, you can really add anything to this. Uh, they have their their uh, newer Gutenberg block editor. Um, so you have a ton of different blocks and different types of things that you can put in here, which really do add a lot of power to this. And again, I can add text, images, video, um, all types of stuff, links to different things. You can even add buttons if you want. But I'm finding this editor to be great and it works on iPhone and iPad, which is a very, very big bonus. The fact that I can, from my phone, either fix a, a typo, which is common, uh, or it's not uncommon for me to, if I get an email while I'm out somewhere, I might write like a little support page for someone and send them the link. And I can do that from my phone, which is awesome. The next reason I went with WordPress is the ability to extend it over time. WordPress has a huge community around it. It's been around for a long time. And this is where it gets into like, you know, like I said earlier, the, the kind of like boring, but reliable infrastructure. I know if I run into an issue, I can Google stuff and there will be answers to things because WordPress is used by so many people. And there's a huge community who build plugins, who build themes, who can just troubleshoot different things. And I value that reliability. And because again, I don't want to, I don't want to have to worry about this kind of product infrastructure. I just want it to work really well. That relates to the next one, which is reliability. So WordPress isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It's used by so many companies in so many situations. And I, I feel confident that they'll be here 10 years from now or 15 years from now. The last one is cost. So I was using multiple websites. So I had Framer, I had, and I had two ghost sites and that was expensive, right? So I had three different sites and by consolidating down into one WordPress site, even with the wordpress.com manage hosting the, the business plan, which is like 25 bucks a month, that's still much cheaper than what I was paying before. So again, I, I find it to be a reasonable trade-off where paying a little bit more for the managed uh, hosting at wordpress.com, but cheaper than what I was doing before. And this is going to be much easier for me to maintain. And in the future, I can always move away from wordpress.com hosting and move the site to the millions of other places that host WordPress sites. So that's it. That is what I learned in 2022 and a little bit before that by trying a, a few different publishing services for the different websites that, uh, that I use for Sofa and and why I consolidate everything down into WordPress. And uh, I hope that this was helpful for you if you're someone who was going through similar situations or maybe you're evaluating a bunch of different services for, for what you should build your product's website on. Um, all of these sites, all of these services, I should say, are incredible and are very good. And even, even the cons that I have for these, these are very specific to the situation that I have and what I am looking for to support the product sofa, which is where I want to spend most of my time. Um, but individually, all these different products are, are amazing and I would highly recommend any of them to anyone. That's it. I hope you found this helpful. And if you like this, I appreciate a thumbs up or subscribe for more stuff and I will see you next time.